Hey everybody, welcome back to the loading screen. So this is my video game focus show where I go over some video game news, do a little reviews here and there, just talk all things video games. So as you guys know who've been following me on SoundCloud, that I usually do this as an audio podcast. So now that I've been doing it, trying to transition more into video podcasts, I know I'm a little bit behind on the news. So some of these news stories might be a little bit old for you, but I'm going to include them anyway. So to start us off, we got a new Batman VR trailer. So Batman VR is one of the games that have been confirmed for PlayStation VR, which is supposed to come out sometime in October. And Batman VR is basically billed as being a chapter in the Batman Arkham series that you can be the Batman. You know, the trailer shows a lot of testimonials of fans who are using it, going nuts about it. Not that they're going to show you ones where people are unimpressed. But uh, it shows scenes where like, you know, you physically take your hand and pick up the Batman cowl and put it on your head and you could probably swing batarangs and everything like that. My only concern with this game, although it does look very cool, you know, I'm a Batman whore. If it ends up being something where you actually get to be the Batman and it's a badass game, it's going to be an absolute blast for me. My only concern is I'm not really quite on board with this VR thing yet. You know, I haven't really played anything virtual reality that's impressed me. I'm worried that it's going to be just like a fad. You know, they had the eye toy back in the PlayStation 2 days. They had the Kinect, which was a fad for a little while, and that thing kind of died off. So just to me, I'm worried this is going to be another, you know, flavor of the month. They're going to shove all these games down our throats. Maybe two out of ten are going to be worth anything. And then PlayStation VR and the Oculus Rift are just going to end up kind of dying out within a couple of years. But the trailer does look really cool. If you go on YouTube, you can check it out right now. Uh, it shows a lot of people very impressed with the game. The graphics do look really good. I just don't know as well how how much of a headache it's going to be to have you know a visor on your eyes and you have a TV screen this close to your face for however long you're going to be playing games. You know, people sit down, they play games for hours on end. So I'm curious at how much your uh, how much your body's going to be able to take that without getting headaches and everything like that. But Batman VR will be coming out sometime in October alongside the PlayStation VR and probably the Oculus Rift as well, so keep your eye out for that. Probably the worst kept secret in PlayStation news, the PS4 Slim has been leaked. There's some pictures online you can check out right now. The Slim version has obviously a lot slimmer and sleeker look to it. Uh, they replaced the little touchscreen buttons of the power button and the open disc button with physical buttons, which is good because that's one of the few flaws with the PlayStation 4 system to me, is that those buttons are so small you can barely even remember which one is which sometimes. They're also showing pictures of a brand new DualShock 4 that they're going to be releasing alongside the PS4 Slim. And from what I can tell, they'll only real difference with this new controller is that now that they put a small light bar on top of the touchpad you know I was hoping that the light bar on the back would be going away completely because you know they were trying to incorporate that with the PlayStation I which again like I was talking about with the VR is something that nobody uses they haven't done anything with it um, and the light bar to me it drains the hell out of the battery you know that's the main problem with the DualShock 4 is that the battery doesn't last for shit and not only that but sometimes when you're playing at night and you're playing a game that bright light bar is so fucking glaring that it just it reflects on the TV screen you have to like hold the controller in a certain way to get rid of the glare even if you put it on a lowest setting you know you can put it on dim you can still see it so I was kinda hoping they'd get rid of that and just if you're gonna put it on the top just have the top one but it looks like they're just keeping the one on the back putting the one on the top so now you can see whatever color or little animations or flashes they're gonna put on that light bar a little bit better so kind of a lateral move to me uh, they also confirmed by the guy who has used the PS4 Slim that the battery doesn't last any longer so that's a real disappointment for me because that's the one real opportunity that they have with a new controller you got to get better batteries in those controllers because those things don't last at all but expect to see the PlayStation Slim revealed in its entirety alongside the PlayStation Neo at the PlayStation conference which is going to be on September 8th well, Final Fantasy 15 has been delayed to November 29th. So this is continuing the trend with this new console generation is that basically every single AAA game that comes out gets delayed at least two or three times before it comes out. You know, the developers are using the same old thing. You know, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to fine tune the game. We're trying to make sure that the graphics are right. Make sure that the story is right. Get all that stuff out of the way. And now you got to wait till November 29th. Now, I'm not a fan of Final Fantasy games, so that's not really going to be anything that I'm going to have to deal with. But it is aggravating for me, even though you hope that it actually makes the game better. I get tired of all these games just being delayed. It's like, don't even bother giving us a release date from now on. Just say ETA 2016 or quarter four 2016 or something like that, because it seems like every single major game we've had this console generation has went through this. For all you Destiny fans out there, they got a Destiny the Collection coming out. I think it's sometime this November. It's for $60. It's going to include the main game Destiny, Expansions 1 and 2, The Taken King, and the new expansion, 
which is titled Rise of Iron. I was not a fan of Destiny when it came out. You know, I, I had I went out, I bought the game, I played probably two or three hours of it, and I got so tired of how monotonous that game was. Just land your ship, do the objective, shoot a few things, get back on your ship, go to a new planet. You know, the graphics were good, but in the Graphics are all good in most of the games nowadays, so I was not a fan of Destiny. I heard the Taken King kind of brought it some new life, and there's a, a huge following for this game. So for a lot of you out there who love Destiny, you got a collection coming out if you haven't picked up all these other expansions yet. Another collection being teased is the Mass Effect Remastered Collection. So we all figured this is probably going to come out at some point. You know, the HD remasters is becoming something where just about every month we get a classic PS3 game that's going to be released in this HD remastered and 1080p and, you know, 60 frames per second and all that kind of stuff. Mass Effect was a great series until the ending of the third game. You know, that third game was amazing until the ending and it really kind of squandered the whole series of Mass Effect to a degree because the big thing with Mass Effect is it's one of those games where all your choices reflect how the story plays out and the choices you make in Mass Effect 1 have repercussions on the story in Mass Effect 3 it carries through to all the games and you know they've been bit, they were selling that the whole time they were releasing those games and you know they're very long and there's tons of decisions you know there's good decisions and there's bad decisions that you make that's supposed to have these huge ramifications in the world you can choose to save certain people or to let certain people die you have the the fate of entire races in your hands there's a ton of stuff in mass effect that you have to choose to where your story goes and by the end of the third game the only repercussions really is what color light shoots around in space. You know, red, green, or blue, I think it was. So that was a big disappointment for me. But if you have not played Mass Effect, even with the ending of the Mass Effect 3, that's a phenomenal series to get a hold of. You know, it's the guys who brought you Knights of the Old Republic, and I think it was Jade Dragon, or Jade Empire, I'm sorry. Uh, it's one of those role-playing games where there's a lot of action, there's a lot of dialogue, it's very story-heavy. The story is great, the voice acting is great, the graphics are phenomenal, especially in 2 and 3. It's a great series to pick up, and I hope they do actually do this remastered collection at some point. It's just being rumored right now, you know, EA is talking about, yeah, it's kind of on our back burner, we are looking at it, which is, you know, that's not a confirmation, but you've got to expect these things are probably going to come out by the, at least by summer of next year. You'll have all three those games to play so if you have not played mass effect definitely cheap keep your eye on this and um, definitely keep your eye on this and pick it up whenever it comes out i just don't see anybody who has played the mass effect games rebuying this and playing through all three of these games again just to have the graphics look a little bit better but mass effect collection coming out soon metal gear survive has been announced for 2017 this is a four-player co-op stealth game that's set somewhat in the metal gear universe so I'm a huge fan of the Metal Gear universe. Obviously, I got Snake on my shirt right now. Solid Snake and Metal Gear Solid, the first game, is probably my favorite action hero and my favorite video game of all time. You know, there's amazing things in Metal Gear Solid 2, even though you kind of get screwed over by not being able to play Snake. Uh, all the games involving Big Boss are phenomenal. With the exception of the Phantom Pain. You know, the Phantom Pain is a phenomenal game as far as the gameplay goes. It was a blast to play. I was addicted to that fucking thing. I was going back all the time trying to beat new missions and find new ways to get certain things done. The open world thing was really, really cool how they incorporated that in the Metal Gear universe. I'm usually not for open world if it's so big that it just kind of distracts from everything else, but they did a good job at keeping it contained. The story in Metal Gear Phantom Pain was a huge disappointment for me. You know, the whole twist at the end, a lot of people saw it coming before the game even came out when there was all that drama with David Hayter being taken out and they put Kiefer Sutherland in the voice acting, which is another negative. He didn't do anywhere near as good as David Hayter. I don't know why they didn't keep him in this game. This The story choices that they made and the direction they went, it just created more questions than it answered. So now they got this Metal Gear Survive coming out and it's supposed to be set directly after the events of Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. You know, the cutscene shows a scene whenever Big Boss and everybody is escaping from Outer Haven. You see the members of Big Boss's militia who aren't killed in that game's finale kind of transported through this wormhole into this alternate universe and they get dropped in and there's like a fence around them and there's like these zombie monsters coming at them and all this weird shit. What the fuck are you doing with Metal Gear Solid, Konami? You know, they had this huge drama start with Hideo Kojima and Konami making a split. You know, Hideo Kojima is the one who's made all these Metal Gear Solid games and all the Metal Gear games. He's the guy who's made all these games what they are. He's the reason why they're so fucking good. And they're totally fucking it up now that he's gone. You know, when you have your first game, when that big major game developer leaves, you're supposed to put out a statement out there for the fans saying, okay, 
relax guys we got this we know what's great about metal gear we're going to keep giving you those it's going to be a little bit different than hideo kojima's take but we're going to keep giving you more of what you love what the fuck is this shit you know just like this picture over here where this militia guy is getting sucked through a wormhole that's how all metal gear fans feel when they watch this trailer they're getting sucked out of the world that they love you know i'll be fair the gameplay might be cool it might be fresh it might be something that will be fun to play that i'll keep going back to like i did with the phantom pain but i have major concerns with the story of this game you know, I don't like the title. It, to me, it just shows that they're really going off the rails with this franchise. You know, choosing to do a co-op stealth shoot 'em up game, that just tells me that they're trying to make Metal Gear Solid into something like Call of Duty, where you're just going to have multiplayer factions all over the place. You know, Metal Gear Solid games have always had a certain amount of weirdness to them, but Hideo Kojima kept it at a very specific version of weird. You know, this trans-dimensional portals and getting sucked into a zombie world and all that kind of stuff. This is way the fuck out of left field for Metal Gear Solid. You know, the, the trailer, the graphics look great, which is something that Metal Gear Solid games have never had a problem with, but you need more than great graphics to keep your fans. This is an absolutely ridiculous take on this franchise. I'll be fair and give it a shot when it comes out, depending on what these other trailers look like. You know, we haven't seen any gameplay. This is all pre-rendered graphics you see in this trailer, but I am fucking pissed at the direction that they are putting this Metal Gear Solid franchise in. They have so many opportunities to take this story, and they're just fucking squandering it right now. So, you know, it's supposed to be released in 2017 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So keep your eye on Metal Gear Survive. Maybe we'll see something better come out of this later on. Next up is a game that I was requested to talk about, which is Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Now, I haven't played a whole lot of these Sniper games. I know there's the Ghost Warrior franchise, there's the Sniper Elite franchise. I played Sniper Elite 3, the Ultimate Edition or whatever it came out. It was a cheap little game. I figured it might be a little cheap action thrill. It was decent. Basically, all these Sniper games, from what I can tell, kind of ride on the gimmick of being able to snipe somebody, and you shoot them, and you see the bullet slow motion go all the way through whatever body part you aimed at. And it's cool the first couple times you see it, but it kind of gets old quick. You know, it's, it's not really something where you can build an entire game around it. Obviously, the story's weak in these games. This is just built for Call of Duty and Battlefield fanatics who need something to kind of keep them busy in between those franchises, you know. And this one, the trailer, it, it does look like it has some decently cool elements in it. And we've seen them in other games, but putting them in a sniper game is a little bit different. You know, you have a drone that you can fly around the level and kind of scope out your spots. You have three different ways you can attack the mission, which kind of reminds me of Crisis. You know, you have sniper, which is kind of like your stealth element. You have ghost, which is kind of, uh, again, a stealth element, but more close quarters, like using knife kills and th stuff like that. And you have warrior, which is basically guns blazing. You know, I'm a big fan of stealth games but i've got to be honest in the gameplay trailer in this the stealth looks fucking punishing in this game there was literally a sequence where a guy was waiting for a tank to drive by and the tank was moving like this and he was taking a whole fucking day to get out of the way and that's one thing that really kills the momentum in stealth games is if you have to sit there and wait for so long that you start looking around for any option you can to just speed through the level and you end up getting seen because you're trying to rush. You know, the stealth games need to have a good mix of action and stealth to keep you engaged. I love stealth, but it's got to be fun. It can't be punishing where you're sitting there and it's an absolute chore to get somewhere stealthily. Another element that they try to bring into a lot of these sniper games, which is also a big element in the sniper version of Battlefield, is they try to incorporate like wind resistance and bullet drop and wind speed and angles and all that kind of stuff. So that is something different for those who are really into that kind of thing. For others who are more casual shooter fans, it's a lot more to incorporate in your game. That's a lot more to increase the difficulty of just getting through the game, which is good for some, is bad for others. Some of the stealth coverage in this game looks really, really bad. You know, there was a scene where I showed a guy, he was just, he was crawling through this little grass bush, and you could see that there was like two blades of grass like this, and the enemies couldn't see him. And it was fucking ridiculous. It was like, oh, okay, it's one of those games. Something else that I thought was really funny too is there were scenes where like you go up and kind of like uh, Splinter Cell, you take a guy by his throat and you have a knife against him and you're trying to get some information out of him and there's enemies like five feet away and he's talking loud as fuck. He's like, tell me the information, come on. And it's again, it's just like the glass, um, the grass blades. It's like, oh, so he doesn't see him. He doesn't hear that, huh? You know, this probably isn't going to be a game that I'm going to check out, but for those of you who are huge fans of the Sniper Ghost Warrior franchise or fans of the Sniper Elite franchise and you love these types of games, you got another one coming out. It's supposed to be coming out January 27, 2017 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So keep your eye out for Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. 
Injustice 2 released another trailer displaying Harley Quinn and Deadshot as playable characters. Now, Harley Quinn was a playable character in the first Injustice, but they're really making her look more like her movie character version in this one. So this was kind of a cross promotion with Suicide Squad when it came out. You know, Deadshot and Harley Quinn were basically the two main characters of that movie. So a lot of people were asking, okay, are we gonna get to play them in Injustice 2? And yep, you are. They look pretty cool. You know, the Injustice Gods Among Us game was very cool. It's a very cool comic book story. And it's the same elements as the Mortal Kombat games, the recent ones. It's the same developer. I had a lot of fun with the first Injustice. You know, it was one of those few fighting games where I actually played through the whole story. Getting to play as these DC comic villains and heroes is a lot of fun. You know, getting to use their powers, their little animated special move. Like my favorite was the Flash whenever he runs around the world and then punches you in the face. Um, it was a blast. So I'm really looking forward to Injustice 2. I hope it's as fun as the first one. I hope it doesn't get too convoluted with all these different moves because that's where, you know, me not being a huge guy in a fighting game, that's where my weakness is, is learning all these different combos. But I'm really looking forward to Injustice 2. The fact that Harley Quinn is back and we get Deadshot playable now does nothing but excite me more for this game. As I talked about in a previous episode, Telltale Games was working with uh, Mr. Robot for a secret project. It was kind of getting rumored, you know, they put a little Twitter feed out with uh, some cross promotion for E Corp, which for those of you who watch the show know is the big evil corporation in that show. So a lot of us were wondering, me especially, oh, are we gonna get a whole Telltale series on this? Nope, just a mobile game. It's Mr. Robot Exfiltration. I believe it's out now for iOS and Android. It's basically going to be Telltale's version of like a texting kind of game. I th from what I could gather from what the article was saying, you have conversations with people through text. And so it's going to have elements of Telltale games where you can kind of choose the path of the story. I just don't know exactly what the gameplay is going to be like in this. You know, I'm not a fan of mobile games. I get sick of them very quickly, so I will not be playing this. But if you guys do play this and it's absolute blast, please let me know in the comment section below so I can check it out. So the big Mr. Robot Telltale games mystery is solved. It's just a mobile game. Mr. Robot Exfiltration. Resident Evil 7 released another gameplay trailer now showing a guy or a girl trying to move through this house that they showed in the teaser where this person is kind of walking around with a little lantern trying to find you and you're walking around trying to hide basically and, and evade her. You know, I'm very interested in this Resident Evil 7 because it's something very different, but I'm really worried about the gameplay. Like I've already said in this video, I'm very, very unsold on this VR thing. So the fact that they're gonna base this whole game around VR it worries me, you know, is there going to be combat? Is there going to be a lot of elements from the Resident Evil games that we love? I know they're trying to get away from the action stuff from Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6, which they need to, but I'm worried that they're going to go way too far into trying to copy the Silent Hills game. You know, this is the, the teaser that they released that was basically a playable teaser was a blatant rip off of PT. You know, I played PT. It was a very, very creepy thing. It was very new and unique. I mean, what can you say about PT that hasn't already been said? But this teaser that they released at E3 was, it was fun and it was different and it was creepy with the different sounds. You know, there's a part, just like PT, whenever somebody walks in front of your door, you're like, oh shit. But I'm just worried about what the gameplay is gonna look like in this. You know, is the whole game gonna be you just trying to hide and evade to get out of this house or to get wherever you're going? What's the story like? Is there gonna be classic Resident Evil characters? Is Jill Valentine? Is Chris Redfield, is Leon Kennedy gonna show up? Is this gonna be just set in the Resident Evil universe but a completely different game, a new reboot? A lot of questions that need to be answered. The graphics do look cool. If the VR thing is a success, this is gonna be something very, very cool to check out because nothing is cooler than having a scary ass game where you can't escape it. You know, literally you're gonna be surrounded. Every time you look, there's gonna be somebody around you and you're gonna have headphones in. It's gonna be a really immersive experience, I hope. But Again, just like the Batman VR thing, I have all the interest in the world, but I'm just very, very worried. And hopefully a lot of those questions will be answered the first couple months we have VR with us starting in October. This game, Resident Evil 7, is going to be released January 24, 2017 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So check out Resident Evil 7 when it comes out. The last story I want to talk about today, guys, is something that was just unearthed. There was a GoldenEye HD remake that was in production, that was supposed to come out in 2008 for Xbox 360. And this fucking remake looked awesome. There's a 30 minute track on YouTube that shows gameplay and it shows like the difference, like kind of like the Halo remake where you could press a button and see the old graphics and then see the new graphics. It shows all that. It shows the first four or five levels of the game. 
man, why didn't they come out with this? There was some kind of a copyright disagreement between Nintendo and Microsoft. You know, I guess Nintendo had kind of gained the rights of GoldenEye. They tried to do a GoldenEye sequel on the GameCube, and shortly after this thing must have went in the trash, they released that GoldenEye remake of their own on the Wii, where they replaced Pierce Brosnan with Daniel Craig, which was a decent game, but it wasn't GoldenEye. Man, I really wish this would have came out. Like, if they could get this back on track, I would buy an Xbox One for this game only. I was a GoldenEye fanatic when that thing came out on N64. When that came out, I think a friend of my cousin's had brought it over to his house one night when I was spending the night, and we played that thing all night. I mean, it was sunrise and we were still playing it. Then I went home, I went to my local video store, for those who still remember what those are, and I rented GoldenEye, and I must have rented that damn thing eight or nine times. I probably paid for the game twice with how many times I rented it before I finally got it for my birthday a year or so after, after that. I played this game all the time with my brother. You know, I was addicted to the multiplayer. I constantly was trying to get the objectives on the single player. This game is an absolute classic. If they made the HD remake like they're showing in this, where they keep the game exactly how it is, but just update the graphics and the frame rate, this game would crush financially. I don't know why they can't reach an agreement. Even if Nintendo gets 30% or 40% of the game's profits when it comes out, that's going to be truckloads of money. So I really wish and I hope that all the fan reaction that this 30 minute gameplay is going to get like a Deadpool kind of reaction where everybody sees it, you know, it was leaked online to see what the interest is and everybody loses their shit about it. And then there's a big studio exec that says, hey, look, you see all those comments on that YouTube video we put where the 30 minutes at GoldenEye, there's a market for this. We need to get this game going. I really hope that happens because like I said, I would go out today and buy an Xbox One if they had a GoldenEye HD remake on it. So very awesome. Please go and check out the 30 minute gameplay trailer. If you're a fan of the old fashioned GoldenEye and try to put comments, do whatever you can to get this thing some buzz because we need this thing to happen. This would be a badass game to add to our collections. Well, that does it for my second episode of the loading screen, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video format more than the audio format. I'm still gonna post the audio on SoundCloud. Please like and subscribe, leave any comments below on some of these stories or some other stories you'd like to hear me talk about or some other ideas you'd like to have me bring to this show. Please subscribe and I will see you next time with the loading screen.